right guys, welcome to the conversation. Welcome to the Young Saints Youth Office. Truly didn't know it could be this vibey, honestly. I wish I could work in this vibe every day. But thanks for coming. We're super excited to dive into this conversation. Yeah, guys, um, we are just here gathering in this space um, just to really, the whole point of the conversation um, is just to have open, honest conversations on various topics. Um, and just giving you guys space uh, to really just dialogue with each other, with us, uh, and with the world, honestly, um, on just how you feel on different topics, your experiences, uh, your walk with God. Um, and so we're really excited for you guys to be here. We're really excited. Uh, and thank you again for joining us for the first one. This is the first ever. It's like a new baby. Brand new thing. That Young Saints is doing. So we love it. Um, yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks for having us. <laughs> yeah. We love it. Okay, so let's just dive into the first question. We want to know how many people you guys follow on Instagram. So I'll start with Yara. How many people do you follow? Can I look it up? Yeah, okay. for sure. I don't expect you to just um, know off of the top of your head. I follow 1,786 people. <laughs> so many people. Oh my goodness. Well, I did not expect that either. I thought it was like maybe 1,000. Yeah. 1,786. Wow, yeah. that's crazy. What about you, Abby? I'm gonna check too. I think it's around like 700. Okay. Yeah. The big difference between you and me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 714. 714. Okay, great. Lucas? Um, I follow 760. Okay, wow. You knew that off, off the, the top dome. of your head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. What about you? I don't have Instagram. Wow. Instagram. I love that. So this is nobody. so great. Yeah, I know. I only follow. Only follow? Yeah. Wow. Okay, okay. <laughs> Here's, a, here's the real question is, do you actually know 1,700 people? <laughs> yeah, that's insane. <laughs> like, who are the well, 1,700 um, people that you know? Well, depends. <laughs> I know maybe like half of them, I guess. Oh, wow. It's because I have like, because I'm from Germany. I know a lot of people from Germany, so that's like half of it. And then a lot of people from America. And then just people like I'm inspired by. Celebrity. She's just more cultured than us. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, no, us. Okay. I love it. Well, I love that. Um, so, what does it mean to follow someone? I mean, we just talked about Asher doesn't have Instagram at all, so technically, like, is he following someone? Like, we got 700 people, you're following 1,700 people, um, but what does it really mean to really follow someone? We talking in like an Instagram sense or just in any sense? Just in general. Like when you say like, I follow so-and-so, it doesn't have to just be Instagram, but it's like, uh, I follow the Lord. I follow um, my mentor. I follow my parents. Like what does it mean to just follow someone? Well, I mean, it kind of feels like it means like that you're trying to like kind of imitate them, you know? That like, I don't know, if there's something about them that you like, you kind of try to make that a part of yourself too. I love that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Oh, you can go for it. So does like some aspect of their life like inspires you and so you want to be like that person or yeah you're just like inspired I guess. Yeah. Totally like if someone who inspires you or who you look up to um, is someone that for example me I would follow um, for, especially for something that I really like to do for example like basketball I like basketball a lot so I'd follow someone who's good at that you know take inspiration from what they do and for anything really in life you do that yeah it's for me I would say like giving somebody space to influence like your way of thinking kind of yeah yeah I love that that's great that's awesome um, have you guys ever felt pressure of following God over what's popular yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean if you follow God you're obviously gonna be pressured um, yeah I mean, I mean, yeah, on social media, I feel like in every aspect of it, wherever you follow God, you're going to be, like, in every aspect of your life, you're going to be pressured um, a bit, because, yeah, um, for example, music-wise, like, in my school, um, or, like, something that I noticed, like, in the last couple of months is that, like, the music of our generation how can I say that? Oh. Um, hold on, let me, let me give me a minute to sort of. Okay, so like, um, our generation, 
the music that we get get confronted with sometimes doesn't agree with the things that the Bible preaches or yeah. um, that's like my truth, like Jesus' truth and the music that and the truth that the like the music is portraying doesn't agree with it and so sometimes mm -hmm. I feel like pressured to um, when like on TikTok a new trend is with a, with music and that tells like a story that or just something a lifestyle that I don't agree with like obviously I'm gonna be pressured I like the sound I like it but like God and it's not my truth like yeah. what can yeah. I yeah yeah that's just real kind of, I feel like all the time we feel pressured to um, you know be to you know do something different um exactly like what she said i feel like society we always tend to have like something that they're always pushing on us a new trend almost every week yeah. something new to do something new to um to try um and i feel like a lot of times at least for me i'll be you know i'll be thinking about that and like oh that seems cool and i'll feel like kind of like something in my heart i'm like feeling like no you know take a step back look at it overall yeah. and then you start to realize that some things that we that were given on a like kind of like a silver platter and said here this is for you we have to take a step back and reanalyze it yeah. and i think that sometimes it's helpful to feel like to feel that pressure from god to like take a step back and reanalyze and see what you're um see what you're really being given instead of looking at things at face value yeah i love that love it um just a follow-up question on that actually um how do you guys approach um like identifying um that like the difference between like what is like what is what does it mean to like follow God and what is the world presenting as a trend and like how do you guys identify that check in you of like ooh maybe this doesn't align with God mm -hmm. and maybe this doesn't align with what I read in my Bible um, like what like what how have you guys experienced that like check of like ooh maybe this trend isn't the best for me I don't know that's a good question. Well, if I'm even asking myself, like, is this compromising, like, what I believe, that's usually when I, like, will cut it off, because I know it's easy to get, like, swept away personally. For me, I've struggled with, like, I won't even realize that it's not lining up or that my lifestyle has changed because of certain influences that I'm keeping around, and then mm -hmm. I'll feel like, oh my goodness, wait, and as soon as I start to question, I'm like, that's definitely something I need to shut mm -hmm. down, because there's not, like, there wouldn't even be a thought in my mind as to how much can I compromise if it was good for me? Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's um, good. For me, I guess it's like I try to, um, everything that, like, you know, I see, I think I think a lot of things are really cool and interesting, but I feel like, especially when it comes to things like how you were saying where um, how do we know when to take a step back and reanalyze, I feel like a lot of times it'll I'll just feel like something in my heart, like take a step back. I feel like the Holy Spirit kind of telling me, like, you know, look at what you're reanalyze and see what is actual where this is coming from. Um, because sometimes um, something that may seem good sometimes isn't actually or sometimes doesn't actually align with our values. And I feel like a lot of times um, that's how I find out where it is. And sometimes it comes, um, you know, from reading the scripture and looking at where that is, mm -hmm. um, looking at where things line up with that. Because a lot of times I feel like. Um, will think like, oh no, you know, this is fine. You know, this doesn't matter um, when it comes to like being a Christian and, and having a relationship with God, but then you really dive into the into the word and you see like, wow, this does actually matter because everything I do matters. Yeah, that's good. I love it. Yeah, even like, even like, like my parents will like sometimes be like, hey, I don't know if that's the best thing for you, you know? And like at that time, like you want to be able to go, like my parents are believers and so I want to be able to go man I think they know more than I do about mm -hmm. this sort of thing you know going through being a teenager and everything and I haven't before so just listen to them you know? yeah I love that I love it um and to you guys personally what does it mean to follow Jesus what does it look like well personally it's like letting him influence every single part of my life and like letting him have his way, which is something I'm really working on right now because I like to like put God in pieces of my life. Mm. But what I'm really working on is like to follow God and to fully follow him is to let him fully like have his way with every single part of my heart and every yeah. single thought that like comes into my mind. Yeah, 
Yeah, I totally agree. I have the same trouble. I feel like sometimes for me at least I'll be, I'll I want to do something so bad or I want to um, something you know I want to do something so bad that I'll that I'll completely like just shut out what he's saying and put him on the side and then when I need him I I'll, I'll bring him back and be like okay now I need you for this. I feel like um sometimes I will use him as a crutch instead of using him as like a need and like something as a relationship instead of just using him like whenever I need you you can come but when I don't need you you can't be here mm-hmm. you know what I mean I feel like sometimes I need to r- look at my relationship with him because a relationship is the most important part of how of, of knowing God and being a believer oh. is being well, close yeah. to to him and being close to his heart like David was you know to be able to hear everything exactly like he was saying and I feel like sometimes especially for me I will put that aside and then I'll go back and I realize I shouldn't have done that because I just mm-hmm. gave up something so important. I gave up who uh, who I could have been for that thing instead of listening to the Lord. Lucas is about to preach. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. Anyone else? I mean, like, we've been reading through the Gospels a lot recently, you know, with the, the whole uh, New Testament challenge thing. So that's just been, like, reminding me, like, I don't know. It's like anchoring, like, you're hoping, like, what Jesus said, you know? Yeah. And, like, I don't know, like, even he says, like, some harsh stuff, you know? Like, <laughs> deny yourself, take up your cross, and you're like, what? But then you read stories about people who did it, and you're like, man, I just want to be like that. Wow. So just, like, trying to find the place where you can just give everything. Wow. Yeah. I love that. Wow. So, as you guys know, um, in high school for Young Saints, Uh, We're doing a 28-day New Testament shred. We are shredding the whole New Testament in 28 days. Shredding it. Which is amazing. We're shredding it. it. We're just (laughs) getting that spiritual muscle strong. Um, But I wanted to ask, especially going off of um, Asher's answer from the last question, um, how important has the Bible and prayer been in just following God? I mean, for me, it's... It's, I feel like it's been super important, you know, because, like, I don't know. Like, every time I get more engaged in prayer, it seems like I'm more on the right track, you know. And then I'm busy, you know, I got a lot of school. And so when I'm not engaged, like, I end up going off a bit and just getting distracted by stuff, you know. And I feel like it, like, anchors me so much and even just reading the Bible again because... I mean, my parents are pastors, I know the Bible, but reading it again, like we've been doing, is just like, it's like a breath of fresh air every night, you know, before I go to bed. It's just so good. Love it. Yeah, I feel like both of it is very essential, like prayer and Bible. Without it, without prayer, I don't think I will be like, I don't think there will be a relationship between me and Jesus, because I mean, prayer is talking to Jesus, and um, even like reading the Bible, reading the Bible is how I find how I find out like my identity um, as a child of God and as like a daughter of God, and how I know what I can do that I can like keep people and um, just yeah just to figure out who I am and it helps me it helps me just staying close to God and understanding Jesus and understanding God and why things happen how they happen and like finding answers maybe too. Mm-hmm. Um, to me, those two are like so important, especially prayer for me, um, because I really, I really like talking to God and, and you know, speaking to Him and asking Him questions. And I know that when I was younger, um, I used to think of prayer as instead of being having a conversation with the Lord as kind of a ritual, something like, you know, mm-hmm. thank you Jesus for this day, bless this food, or Lord, have let me have good dreams, Amen. <laughs> and instead of and I just continuously did that and I found that you know it like I was just asking for things and I wasn't having a one-on-one conversation and then I started you know diving a little bit deeper and finding out that the that really prayer is is having a one-on-one conversation with the Lord and you know you know bouncing back and forth from him and when I found out about that everything just changed because I was able to to really understand understand and gain a deeper understanding of what he was saying 
for me and what he was saying in his word. And so I think that they are, like, both of them are so important to knowing who we are and to knowing what we, what we are in God's eyes. Yeah, that's so good. It was like I had to read this verse, and this is just what you did. You had to do this, or else you like weren't a Christian. Mm -hmm. And I've learned that, like, especially like recently with the new like shed that we started, January, my mind was just so full of like all of these like I don't know which way to go. There's so much going on. There's so much changing in my life right now, and just like actually talking to the Lord like through the Bible and finding answers that I didn't even know were there. I yeah. you noticed an immediate shift even from like January 31st. February 1st the first time I like really started listening to like what the words were saying like it's like I could hear God talking to me towards it and like quieting all of those things that were like telling me different things in my mind and it it just made things a lot more peaceful like every time I read the Bible it just gives me like guidance you know yeah I love that I love that that's so great so what would you say to someone who's struggling or confused on who to follow when you look at God's just such like a firm foundation, you know, that like when you look at other people, it kind of, they're hit or miss, you know, and like the only one who in the end is going to actually be reliable to you, it's going to be God, you know, it's not going to be like your friend over here, your friend over there, you know, like, I don't know, it's just, it's, it's more, it's just more concrete than than other things. Other things are kind of, everybody else is like you and they're kind of getting blown along mm -hmm. by everything and I don't know, finding finding God and someone who kind of, I don't know, he, he orchestrates it all, you know, he's the one, if you look around you're like, oh my gosh, this, this wasn't an accident, like God did all this, he can, he, he does, he does everything, you know, he's just so much more reliable than people are. Wow. Yeah. I love that. It's like, Trends come and go, popularity comes and goes, high school comes and goes, everything comes and goes, but he's still there in the end. And I feel like that, we have, a lot of us have to start realizing that, that everything that we, that, you know, that we desire, that society tells us we should desire, comes and goes. We mm -hmm. see that all the time, trends are coming and going, different things, you know what I mean? Everything passes, but in the end, the only one who, st who sits there is God. The only one who, the only one who never changes, whether it be yesterday, today, or tomorrow, is God. And I feel like it's so important to realize that because we're always so, um, just, we're drowning in our own, in, in what we want to be for ourselves, and we never see what God wants for ourselves. And we never realize that Jesus is the only one that can really make us reach who we are. And we think that, you know, Popularity is going to give us followers. Having like 5,000 followers is going to make us be our true selves. But, we, but then when you hit that, it's just a false peak. You're just there and there's, oh, there's another thing. But when you, when you have a relationship with Jesus and you're set on his foundation, you're already at the peak. You're already above everything because there is nothing better than having a relationship with him. He is everything. A false peak. Cool. Woof. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Abby, what would you say? I love that. I think that it, like, if I were to put it in, like, one phrase, is that you don't, like, you have nothing without him, and that no matter how much you dig and dig, and I've been there, like, digging through the likes, the social media, like, friendships in your life, the followers of people you follow in your actual life, no matter how much you dig, nothing will ever be able to satisfy you like him or in any way, like there's always gonna be something missing until you find him. And that it's truly all you need, like when you do find it, it's something like when you do find the Lord, he's so unlike every other thing that you can see in your life, you know? Like every other yeah. outcome. And it's empty without him, but it's so full with him. Yeah, yeah. wow. Wow. I feel like I uh, also just want to say that it's okay to get help. Like, if you notice that you're, like, having difficult with stuff like that, like, go to, the youth, to, go to your youth leader and um, be like, hey, I'm struggling with that. Like, can you help me? Because they've all been through it before, and, um, like, they want to help you. They're, like, your older bigger brother or, like, sister, and um, 
Jeanette says, if you're having difficulties, go to your youth leader and talk to them because um, they can really help you. I love that. Yeah. yeah, I love, I think what I love about just this topic of like, who are you following? Um, it's, so, it's so crazy how society will give us someone different to follow every week. You know, there's another rising person, another influential person to follow. Um, but I, I think I love that what you guys have been saying is that the one thing that we know is that Jesus always stays the same. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Um, and that there's actually, we, we can have hope that there's actually someone that we can follow for the rest of our lives that will always be there, that will always lead us, who really knows us. Um, and so I, I just love this topic. I love what you guys have said so far and just really just have been enjoying this because I think, I think yeah, I think the world needs to know that there's always an option. Every day, every day you guys go to school, every day you guys are, have a different option on who to follow. Whether it's your friend, your friend's decisions, your parents' decisions, uh, your own decisions, your sibling's decision, uh, your 1,700 <laughs> people that you follow on Instagram's decision. Oh, you know, like you have 1,700 people or 700 or no one <laughs> that you follow on Instagram um, and you're watching their lives and we are met, like we're met with decisions every day on like, do I imitate? Yeah is what they present to me worth following um, but we always know that Jesus is always worth following and yeah. so I just love this so much guys yeah. thanks so much for coming out on a school afternoon school day <laughs> afternoon thanks for sharing your thoughts where you guys are at with the Lord or what you guys thinking about followers and following people I loved hearing all your guys' thoughts yeah yeah thanks so yeah. much thanks guys we um, love you I actually I actually want to this was not in the, the script. I'm going to throw a wrench in there. Um, but I actually would love for me and Tori just to end with praying for you guys. Because I think, honestly, like what you guys have shared uh, today is so impactful and it's so important um, for your peers, for your friends to hear. Um, yeah. And we just really want to just honor what is on your guys' life and your voice. And we really just want to thank you. So we're just going to... First, I'm going to pray yeah. for you. I didn't tell Tori about this. I love, like, it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> also, before we pray, um, going off the cuff here, yeah. too. If you guys, I know that we're, like, filming this, and, like, you guys who are listening, if you feel like, you're like, wow, like, I feel like I need prayer, or I need, like, I need to redirect on who I'm following, like, now's your chance. Like, now's your chance to, like, dive in and just redirect, and the Lord is there. So we're just going to pray, and you guys are just going to receive this prayer as well. Love it. Yeah. Jesus, wow. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your nearness, even in this room and for the people listening. And God, I thank you so much for what you are doing in these kids. Lord, I thank you so much for the things that you're teaching them and for the fact that they can hear your voice so clear. And God, I just pray even as they enter into a whole new school week this week, Lord, that you would just, um, that you would just bless their heart, bless their minds, that you'd give them eyes to see what you're doing and ears to hear what you're saying, that you'd cover their hearts in grace. Yeah, Jesus, that you would just cover them in your presence, that you would surround them with your thick presence, Jesus. Yeah, and Holy Spirit, I just yeah. ask right now for anyone that's listening. Yeah. God, we ask right now, Holy Spirit, would you uh, just drop in the room, wherever they are, whether yeah. you're listening in your car, whether you're listening in your kitchen, whether you're listening in your room, uh, or just in between classes, Holy Spirit, I ask that you would just speak right now to whoever's listening. Uh, God, would you speak to us in this room right now? Holy Spirit, would you guide us and would you lead us and would you teach us how to follow you even more every day? Yeah. Yeah, and I, I just want to invite, I'm just going to look at the camera, I just want to invite anyone, uh, if you're out there, if you're listening, uh, and you're like, I don't know who Jesus is, I don't know, I don't know, or maybe you do know who Jesus is and you're not following him, um, I just want to invite you right now um, and just to f open up your heart and just open up your mind and just say out loud, just say, Jesus, 
Would you come into my heart? Would you come into my life? Would you, would you be this Lord and Savior of my life? And just say, Holy Spirit, teach me how to follow Jesus. Um, and just, I just want to encourage you guys just to dive into the Word of God. Start in the book of John. If you don't know where to start, start in the book of John. It's an amazing place to start. Um, and we just want to invite you in just a special time of just following God. Because God is the only one who will never change in your life. He's the only one who actually really knows who you are. And so we just want to thank you for watching. Um, thank you guys Thanks, for guys. coming. Because this has just been a special time of just open, honest dialogue, conversation, and just honesty with God. And so um, we're here for it all. We love you guys. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us for the first episode of The Conversation. Uh, we hope this conversation stirred up a lot of questions within you, with amongst your friends, maybe between you and God. Yeah, and if this episode caused you to even, like, rededicate your life to the Lord or um, even stir up more questions, we want to hear about it and we want to support you on your journey. So feel free to DM us at Bethel Young Saints, and we want to dive deeper into the conversation with what it means to follow the Lord. Yeah, and we're so excited to be on more conversation journeys yeah. uh, with you guys. So make sure that you don't miss out on more conversations. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Uh, hit the like button. And if you love this episode, make sure you share it with some friends. Yeah. Uh, share it with a family member. And we would just love, just comment below. We'd love to hear uh, what your answers to these questions were. Uh, we want you to join the conversation with us. Um, so just join the conversation down in the comments, DM us on Instagram. Uh, we want to connect with you and we look forward to more conversations. Yeah. Love you guys. Love ya.